You are now listening to The Art of Reinvention by Teflon John, where my goal is to inspire you mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually. And I just want to help you grow the garden of your mind. I just want to change the world one person at a time by giving them motivational advice, inspirational advice. And right now, I'm glad that you're tuning in to the podcast show. So we want you to sit back, open up your mind, and just absorb all the content. Please share this content across all of your social media platforms as it will help this show grow. Sit back and enjoy. One love. Be blessed. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Teflon John, coming to you courtesy of the uh, I Am Teflon John brand and the Art of Reinvention talk show. And today we have a power pack show, and I know I always say power pack, but today's show I have the Apostle Kelso Clark and Jackie Clark. Glad to have you. Pleasure to be here. Glad to be here, sir. And we're going to be talking about marriage, and one of the, uh, I think, the most popular topics in break rooms and the barbershop, the nail shops, and in churches. So I uh, want you go ahead and introduce yourself to the to the people. Well, of course, I'm Kelso, and this is my wonderful wife, Jackie. And uh, we've been married for over 20, well, be 21 years yes, this next July, month. Yeah, yes. next month. Wow. And uh, we're the founders of Shatterproof Marriage. And uh, uh, our goal and our desire is to help marriages who are on the brink of divorce, That's those right. who, are, who have had some trauma uh, and some issues and really gelling and coming together and operating in unity and oneness. And uh, they've taken some hits That's that right. uh, most of the time people just want to faint and give up. Mm. But um, it is our desire and our vision to be able to help those individuals see that there is a ray of hope. Right. And uh, if we can teach you how to communicate, yeah. teach you how to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, be spiritually, build your faith yeah. in God towards uh, uh, one another and the marriage, then I believe you can succeed. So that's that's just our whole goal and our, our passion and our mission in life for marriage. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so Jackie, why Shatterproof? I mean, that's to me, that's oh, wow. like, that can sum up. <laughs> Look, we really we sum probably up tell our whole story, right? <laughs> Indeed. Well, you know, Shatterproof does kind of sum up um, what we've experienced and what we've been through, yeah. even in our own marriage. Okay. Um, we've gone through some really hard times and, um, you know, we're God has allowed us to to come back from those situations where divorce could have been an option. And that's one thing that really kept us together is that we decided we would never name divorce. No matter how bad it got, we would never open our mouth and name divorce. Yeah. So, yeah, and I don't mean to interject, but I just want to interject here uh, with the never name and divorce. How you start will determine how well you finish. That's right. mm-hmm. And so that's why we teach uh, in premarital counseling. Uh, there are so many variables and, and dynamics to the marriage relationship. Um, if you don't set the foundation, yes. what you two agree on that's at the right. beginning, mm-hmm. then you're really setting yourself up for failure. We've that's heard right. the statement that if you fail to plan, you've already planned to fail. That's right. And so that's our right. plan was we will right. never name divorce that's no right. matter how hard it gets. So that's I just right. wanted to that's, interject that's that. That's so good. And we decided as well that we would not be married based on performance. No. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we dwell with one another by, by faith. faith. And mm. that's our big thing. We love to tell people <laughs> that we dwell in this marriage by faith. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I'm not committed to you based on what you do and how well you mm, do it. Right, and if right. you come up to this, you know, mm. expectation and have you checked off my list yeah. and this image <laughs> that I, that we have of one another, but we dwell by faith. You know, I trust what you say, what yeah. you bring to the table. I believe um, in God, God being the cornerstone of yes, the relationship yes, yes. Um, because my, our love and our relationship with God trumps the relationship with one another. Wow. Yeah. I can stay connected to him because I'm connected to the mm, Father. Yeah, mm, yeah. So no matter what we go through, because we know we have a greater source um, that we can go to to come through those situations, mm-hmm. yeah. um, we stay jailed. Yeah. You know, it's not perfect. Yeah. Right. We have issues. Um, Tension, absolutely. stress, it arises, but uh, we but work through it. Yeah. Over the years, God's that's tempered great. us. He's tempered <laughs> us. Um, so that's why Shatterproof. That's Shatterproof. Wow. We're examples that you can overcome. Yeah. Wow. That's that's And that's amazing. That's amazing. So when, you know, when we talk about God, because we're all believers. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's hard, for, I guess, for the newer generation to mm-hmm. understand why Jesus has to be in the center. Yes. But could you explain the correlation of the marriage between a man and a woman mm-hmm. and Jesus in the church? That, that is so wonderful. And I think it's important to understand that man did not create or institute marriage. Right. Um, but marriage was created by God uh, from the beginning. We can go back to the book of Genesis and see when God uh, introduced the whole uh, idea of marriage, yes. you know, the concept of marriage yes. to uh, Adam. He said, I, I see that he He's alone, so I'm going to make him a helpmate. Yes. So we we see that whole uh, create 
activity of God being uh, present in the garden with uh, creating Eve and or creating the woman and, and introducing the woman to um, Adam. But the major part is, is, and this is how I always like to think about that subject is, is that uh, when we deal with, uh, let's say, if you have an uh, Apple electronic, uh, you're not going to send your Apple electronic to Dell Computers to get it fixed That's or right. HP. Right. You're going to mm -hmm. send it back to the manufacturer. That's right. That's right. And so what we have to understand is that if God is the manufacturer or the creator or uh, he's the one that put marriage into motion, then why not go back to him, That's make right. him the That's center right. of it, right. and find out how is it, it, how did you intend marriage to really operate That's and right. function. That's we right. can't operate uh, uh, successfully in our marriage without the creator or without mm. watching us reading the instruction and yeah. finding out, you know, all of the different uh, variables and dynamics of, right. of what benefits we can yes. get out of the marriage. Yes. You, you'll never get that. Mm. Right. out there. You may tap, you may accidentally tap into it, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we don't want to accidentally <laughs> tap yeah. into yeah. anything because yeah. sometimes that can take years. We want to be intentional. Yeah. And so yeah. that's, that's why God is so important. Putting Jesus uh, in that in the relationship and making sure that he's number one, yes. um, that that gives you. Uh, I, I like to say it gives you the the manual mm -hmm. on how this thing is really That's supposed right. to work. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so many people don't get married because they want to be perfect at being a oh, person that's good. That's right. versus that's being perfect at the process that's right. of well. continuing. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's right. so, that's so Keep good. living, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because you know, cause I think like, you know, when I view marriage yeah. and when I view like, I always bring up fitness, but a lot of times you won't be perfect at, you know, eating right all the time, oh, that's right. good. you know, making all the right choices. But if you're perfect at the process of trying, mm -hmm. you will always reach your, oh, that's your right. result. That's right. So yes. how can someone that is, you know, wrestling with that, you know, that had maybe has the, the soulmate that God has for them, but they're mm -hmm. afraid to take it to the next level mm -hmm. because they're afraid like of their past or mm -hmm. the family that they're connected to ruining that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Well, one thing we always teach in our premarital classes um, is communication. Yeah. That, that's the big deal. Learning how to be open and honest with one another. And of course, your relationship with God has a lot to do with what you're able to receive from another yeah. person. Mm. So that communication piece is really, really huge. You know, can you share your heart with this individual? <laughs> can you really be who you, who you believe you are? Yeah. Can they accept you just like you are without the bells and the whistles? Mm. You know, so if you're, if you're afraid to take that next step, somewhere on the inside of you, you don't know if you're going to be accepted right. for, for who you are right now. Yeah, so yeah. we make these excuses. Well, when I get the house and when I get mm -hmm. the bank account, you know, yeah. when I get the status, when that's part of the, the growth process, that's what makes marriage fun Woo! is when you're able to grow into some of these yeah. things yeah. together. Yeah. Sometimes there's a fear in whether or not I can live up to. You know, so we have to get yeah. rid of those things, and and that's where the faith component comes in. You know, we yeah. dwell with one another by, by faith. faith. Yeah. I trust God that you can handle who I am. Yeah. You know, I trust God that I can handle who you are. You yeah. understand? Yeah. And I'm not going to put you on this pedestal and not allow you um, to evolve and become who God right. has called you to be. Right. Yeah. So some of that fear is just in in that facade that we have mm. about who we have to be. Mm. That perfect husband, that perfect wife. You know, yeah. we do selfies and stuff now. Mm. Everything is picture perfect. <laughs> Marriage is Isn't not it, picture right. perfect. No, it's you know, yeah. it's messy. It's a messy bed. Who's gonna make up the bed? Yeah. Who's gonna vacuum the floor? Who's, who's gonna, gonna wash the clothes? The yeah. You know, there's a whole conglomeration of things there. But that faith component yeah. Yeah. and that and that relationship with God oh, yeah. is, is the binding or yeah, the binding yeah. agents. Yeah, because God can give you wisdom on how to deal with one another. Come on, that's right. You know, and I believe that, you know, being married and then being a child that was in part of a dysfunctional marriage, mm -hmm. you you kind of see where some people make their own choices, that's where they right. kind of, yeah. you can tell God was trying to show them or teach them something, yes. mm -hmm. but they make their own choices and they make a mess. So, right. You right. know, and, and then I believe some people come into a marriage hurt. That's mm -hmm. right. Like if you look at that doorway, it's only so wide. Come on. So we had to bring these bags in. Sometimes I had to bring them in one at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people yeah. show up to the marriage with yes. 10 duffel bags. That's Absolutely. Right. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And I think Absolutely. when you try to operate in a small room or a confined space with mm -hmm. bags, you end up knocking things over. Come on. Right. Someone tries to help, then they fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how can someone and, and empower their, their, their spouse who has been through troubled past? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes you may be married to say Mary or Steven, you mm -hmm. know, but you're treating them like Joe and Come Sally. On. Mm -hmm. Come on. Absolutely. Come on. Absolutely. You know, and I'll let you go into that a little yeah, bit, but sure. I'll say that has to do with your individual walk with God as well, um, to where 
you become the person that another person can trust mm. with their stuff. Right. You know, right. you you become the person. You perfect the art of listening. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. sometimes people just need you not to diagnose. You know, not to dissect, you know, <laughs> yeah. not yeah. to do surgery, but to just listen. listen. So yeah. if you can be that safe space, that safe place to just hear them out so that they can unload, yeah. you know, not necessarily, you know, rant, you know, and yeah. vent, mm -hmm. you know, but to unload so that you can help them unpack, mm -hmm. you know. So as you work on yourself as an individual, mm -hmm. you allow yourself, that person rather, that space to unpack their life and you walk them through that. If you're at a better place in that area, mm -hmm. you help walk them through yeah. that. That's yeah. part of the marriage journey. And you know what, I think one of the, uh, the things we learned as mm -hmm. we began to grow together and evolve, um, we, we found out that uh, your struggle was not your struggle alone. Yeah, yeah, Number yeah. one, when we came together, we became one. Yeah. And uh, so now whatever your problem is, is it's my mine. problem. Mm -hmm. right. And um, I know what the things that so I that went takes through. takes out the pointing fingers. And right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I was going through some of my uh, greatest struggles, um, and, and, and maybe we'll talk about that today or I'll come back and talk <laughs> about it. But, um, you know, I felt like I was all alone at, yeah. at one point. Yeah. I felt like it was so embarrassing. It yeah. was too deep to talk about. Yeah. And um, I was ashamed. I was yeah. ashamed of my past, ashamed of some of the things that uh, were beyond my control, yeah. as well as some things that I decided to do. Yeah. And um, when she started discovering some of those things, it even made it made me even more shameful and embarrassed yeah. about it. And um, I began to uh, become even more watch the secretive. Yeah. Mm. You know, when it was, and, and I'll give you one of them, for instance, uh, pornography was a big problem yeah. for me. Yeah. And uh, I became so secretive uh, to the point to where I didn't want her to find anything. But yeah. amazingly, with God in the picture, <laughs> she finds out everything, you know. <laughs> and so, um, and that brought more hurt and more pain and more embarrassment and more shame. Yeah. And and number one, and you may have heard me say it, um, and I've said it to uh, when we preach and when we go all over, and I'm talking about Jackie, she showed me God. And we know number one God is love yeah. and um, so uh, in the midst of it she showed me I wasn't alone I wasn't by myself um, and uh, when we stopped the pointing fingers where well, if you would do this and it well if you didn't do that yeah. and yeah. you're supposed to be a man of God yeah. and you know, well, you're supposed to be a woman of God you know you yeah. kind of go yeah. through the back and forth yeah. and you're yeah. not really resolving the issues yeah. and, and communicating on a, uh, a productive level uh, when you stop that and when I never forget it I, maybe you'll tell that part of it when uh, she began to take on uh, hey, this is I've been treating you like this is your problem alone. Mm -hmm. But no, wait a minute. This is our problem. And we're going to work on it together. And she uh, mm -hmm. discovered that through the story of Abigail and Nabal. Yeah. You know, Nabal was, of course, foolish. Yes. But uh, Abigail had enough wisdom to say when she laid before David, you know what? Uh, let the sin yeah. of my husband, yeah. uh, of the foolishness yeah. of Nabal, yeah. be upon me, yeah. and 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 preserve my whole house, yes. you know. Yeah. And because of that, she that one move she made, she preserved her whole house from destruction. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we began to uh, 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 come into uh, agreement about, that's and right. we began to work on. Yeah. And that's when I was able to be open and honest and, yes. and, and get my freedom and liberty. And as well, um, and we love to talk about the proverbial woman, that that perfect woman in Proverbs. <laughs> 31. But part of that says that his heart safely trusts in her. Mm -hmm. So as wives, we have to be a, a, a treasure chest. Yeah. You know, you don't just put your treasure chest out in the living room for right. everybody to run yeah. rummage through. Yeah. He's got to know that I can put safely. my deepest, even darkest um, thoughts, issues, deeds yeah. in that treasure chest. And you're going to safely secure mm -hmm. them. You won't exploit him. Okay, right, you won't right. beat him up with it. It won't come up as a dart in yeah. the future, but that you become that safe place where his, his heart yeah. can trust in you. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember listening to you guys, and I never forget um, what 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 you said. You know, so feel free to go in wherever, um, dive in wherever. But you said that a wife should be her husband's chief deliverer. Yeah. I was like, wow, that, 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 that stuck with me for like, Glory. that's something I would never Amen. forget. Never Amen. forget. Now, yeah. And I just remember being, you know, just thinking like, wow, like a husband and wife should be able to come to each other. That's right. yeah. You see movies and VH1 where, mm. you know, the girlfriend is talking to the girlfriend and right. the husband knows right. nothing. Or the husband is talking to the, you know, to his guy friend yeah. and the yeah. wife knows nothing. Yeah. And I think that that's a powerful statement because by you being one, that should be your best friend. That should that's be your right. counselor. That should that's be your right. the first person where you unload that information. Yes. Exactly. Because yes. I'm pretty sure once you started to tell her things you were carrying, mm -hmm. it's like putting down bags where you feel like, yes. oh, 
Thanks for helping me carry these. You know what's amazing? I was just telling someone the other day um, how there would be times when um, I'm talking to Jackie. Jackie, she's my, my life coach. And, and, and many people talk about <laughs> how wonderful of a life coach she is and how she's coached them through some uh, um, uh, some hard times and some challenging times. But I said, well, wait a minute. She had all the practice on me first. <laughs> and I, I can recount can uh, the time. Yeah, yeah, well, I know. But, you know, yeah. I can uh, recount the times or remember the times when we were We'll set out at a restaurant yeah. and we'll be talking and she'll just she'll coach me ask me the right questions and coach me through the processes of my uh, of my thoughts and or help me process my thoughts and tears would be rolling down my face and I and I was like gosh this is therapy you know she's doing yeah. therapy on me and so um, uh, that's why I say you know I I know what my wife carries and, and how she's been a help uh, to me through that and and because of that I am who I am today you know I'm able to be who I am wow and that vice versa of course <laughs> yeah, pretty, you know pretty sure. we, we we've learned to not attack. Yeah, we learn yeah. to not yeah. attack. We had this little thing that we would do, um, that we would take a white napkin or whatever little towel, just a white something, and when we would feel that level of tension and attack, yeah, we would get yeah. our white little something and say, yeah. "Wait a minute, I'm not your enemy." Yeah, yeah. we yeah. wave the little white flag, piece of paper or whatever, and we would have to remind <laughs> each other, yeah. "I'm not the enemy. You're right, not the enemy." Right. So let let's cut this. Let's let's stop this. Let's not attack one another. Let's assess what the real problem is so that we can get to the answer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what I realize now, like being married, because I'll be married 10 years next month. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Is, um, good. Marriages are very rare. Good marriages are very mm -hmm. rare. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's not perfect. Yeah. You know, but right. good marriages right. are very rare. And yes. you see where um, people do not respect marriages now. So you mm -hmm. got people that are, uh, I would so say there's true. a fine line between being jealous and envious. And they may mm -hmm. say, you know, being jealous is something I think they can one day obtain. I think wow. if they're envious, they feel like they can never have it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they'll come That's in good. and the enemy will use them and they'll slowly pull one away. That's so true. You know, so, so what is your advice on keeping that circle tight hmm. without letting the opposition come in? Mm, that is well, so good. It, it is good. I, I think um, going back to what we said at the beginning is uh, making sure that your marriage, uh, that you're dwelling with one another by faith, yeah. not by performance. Right. Um, another thing is, because uh, you had mentioned uh, the different TV shows that shows or depicts uh, the man talking to his group of men and wow. vice versa, but um, uh, really creating a strong level of communication. Commun right. For us, communication is everything. Well, can you talk about our code? Or we agree. Okay. You go ahead, sister. <laughs> well, Go ahead. You're too, yeah. okay. You're fine. Well, we have a code. We have a code okay. mm -hmm. um, that we have within our marriage yeah. to where we set boundaries um, around what people can do and what they right. can say so around us, what types of people we let into our lives, right. who we hang out with. We only want to be around people who promote marriage. Right. We don't hang around people who put their wives down mm -hmm. or right. put their husbands right. down. Once those conversations start, mm -hmm. it's cut. Yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I'll, I'll min we'll minister to people. Absolutely. Um, and and try to forbear with them for a while okay. and long, you know, of course, long mm -hmm. suffer. Um, but uh, when we hear too much, because we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the That's word right. of God, and so when we keep hearing uh, negatives, and it's not like That's you're not taking me, yeah, I can't do that. Right. You know, I love right. Jackie. Jackie loves right. me, and you're not gonna get no bad right. information right. from me yeah. on right. Jackie. Right. And so I'm gonna make sure in front of uh, anyone that I uphold yeah. my wife. Yeah, set those guards. You know, yeah, those guards. Yeah. yeah, and it kind of keeps the garden of your mind. It kind of mm. weeds the yes. bad seeds out. Yes. Because I've seen people that come to work or whatever and they complain about their spouse so much to where your thing may be coming home I get undressed I throw my drawers in the corner yeah. mm -hmm. I take a shower I come back and I get them up <laughs> so now all of a sudden because homegirl is telling you that now you're like you know what I'm yeah. tired of you putting your That's and before it. you know it They've infiltrated your marriage exactly. with a bad yeah. seat. That's right. The yeah. Bible says evil communication corrupts mm -hmm. good, good manners. So yeah. we have to guard the gate of our ears when it comes mm -hmm. to our marriage. Um, and a lot of times when people are complaining, they're dropping seeds because they're looking for something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So they're opening up doors and they're looking for ways to kind of um, see what's, what, what else is out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So when you want to safeguard and um, make your, your marriage a safe place, you immediately go in. You don't tolerate it. Not the first time, not the second. You don't mm. tolerate it. Mm. I don't tolerate anyone speaking against my husband. Yeah. And because we've guarded our marriage so well, we don't deal with it at all yeah. now. Right, right. It's, it's just people know. Yeah. You know, if don't you see me, you line. saw him. You know, if you talk to me, you talk to him. 
And there, that fusion has so happened. You know, the Bible says the two become one. But, you know, we walked that out, the journey <laughs> of the marriage. But that's not, you know, we, we think it happens on the day we get married. <laughs> it happens spiritually. Yeah. But we have to walk that thing out in the everyday. And so, because he is my best friend, I am his best friend, you know, sure. we do everything we can to protect, and that's through communicating who we are and what can and cannot happen. Yeah. That's um, great. Yeah. That's great. And I think society now tells you that, um, you know, you have to operate in a certain way and people fall victim to that mm. pressure. But I believe that um, once you release that pressure from you know the external i yes. think you can operate better oh, in your marriage yes, especially Absolutely. when it comes to roles yeah okay so now um you know we're talking about the effects of the uh the external effects on marriage and like i said i believe that in society it's just like you know they, they teach you to go to school go to college graduate yeah. get a job right. instead of go to school go to college graduate become an entrepreneur right and i think that with marriage is like it's so many things that they're setting these standards yeah and so many people, instead of focusing on the person that they're married with, mm -hmm. they're focusing on all this other stuff Absolutely. to build a marriage. And what's funny is, like you said, we live in like that selfie age. Yeah. And to where people are so worried about how other people perceive their Absolutely. marriage, they're not worried about how their spouse, mm -hmm. their partner, mm -hmm. yeah. per perceives the actual marriage. That's right. Because right. right. they could think, hey, y'all are doing good, but at home, hey, man, we're not it's even not sleeping real. in the same bed. Right. You know? right. right. And it, it, it's crazy. So, so what is your take on that? Like, um, just how... You got the, the perfect standard, mm -hmm. then you got the couple that may be a perfect marriage to some, mm -hmm. but because they don't feel like they have all these bells mm -hmm. and whistles to go along with their marriage, mm -hmm. you know, that is affecting that. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. I would say, walk your journey. Walk, right. No marriage is like another. Mm -hmm. There are no two marriages that are alike. And if we settle that, then we, we we kick out comparison. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we kick out it. competition. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's where that the, the, the phony, the fake comes in, the imagery comes and in. And you lose the authenticity. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have oh, authenticity yeah, yeah, yeah. amongst one mm -hmm. another. Um, you can't minister to others because you're trying to keep up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once you kick out com competition and comparison, now um, you can you can live your life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's real begins to be conveyed to people. Yeah. And so what's on you now it can flow to others because mm. oh I can I can make a mistake and we're still a good marriage. Right, you know. Yeah, right, you know yeah. I can you know something can happen detrimental and we can um, get it back together That's again right. and we're still a good marriage. Mm. So I think people define mistakes and issues. Um, as not having a good relationship. Absolutely. Okay. Um, relationship. Okay. Ship. We, we understand that a ship is something that carries. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a flow that goes on with that. Yeah. You know, so how you relate deals with how you are able to flow, how you're able to move, um, how yes. mobile you are, yes. how you're able to evolve and yes. transfer. Yes. So when we get it out of our mind that I got to be like somebody else mm. and just Feel what you have. Yes. Put your attention on, on causing him to become all that God called him to be. He puts That's his attention. Yes. That intentionality is so key yeah. when it comes to truly building um, the marriage that God desires for us to have. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to have my marriage. No. We have people that say to us all the time, if only my husband would do what, you know, and if only my wife would do what, you know, and we're like, no, you don't want him to do what Kelso does. That'll kill you <laughs> because your husband wasn't designed um, right, right. for, you know, for me. Right. I, my husband wasn't yeah. designed for you. And they yeah. won't be that individual. Come That's on right. now. So we're, we're not going to administer the same antidote and the mm -hmm. same healing that you need, but we yeah. can, um, in um, principle, teach you. Right. How to bring things together, how yeah. to communicate, how to love, how to bring your finances together, how to never argue about finances, yes, how to yes. bring, that's so big, and that's Ooh. probably another show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 because that's where the competition comes in. I mm -hmm. make this, you make that, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know our roles, yeah. some of that, that, some of that's the outside influence, yep. you know, yep. because now culture is saying there is no role. Wow. Anything right. you can do, I can do better. Right. You know? So we feel like, you know, the wife can do just what the husband does, yeah. and, you know, vice versa. But um, there are roles according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's how we tend to submit our stance. Yeah. And, and I know married couples that have cut out, they have cut income 
from coming into the house because this one is going to make more than that one. Exactly. It's wow. Pride. That's pride. I mean, yeah. to me, that is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. That yes. If this one can be elevated, if you are one, Come on. that cash That's is the flowing key. in the same exactly. household. Come on. But because you feel like you have that much pride, so, oh, no, that's, that's not right. going to happen. That's right. right. But then you're praying to God for increasing finance. Come well, on. you know, when, when we first got <laughs> married, we, um, I, I think I lost my job at yeah. the post office. Yeah. Um, I, well, they did layoffs, and so yeah. I lost my job, and then I began to work for a temp. Uh, temp agency yeah, for yeah. a while mm -hmm. and had a good paying job yeah. through the temp agency but when we got married I was not I didn't have a solid place of employment mm -hmm. and for a while she was making all of the money mm -hmm. and uh, or making I think even for a while you make more money than mm -hmm. I was but never one time did I feel less than mm -hmm. a man? I knew who I was. I knew the type of person my parents had raised me to be. And um, uh, but when we brought money into the house, mm -hmm. it was our money. Always. We said this. Always. This is what. Matter of fact, this was our statement. This is what we made mm. this week. Yes. This is what we made this month. That's right. It wasn't this is what she made or right. what she brought to the table. This is what I brought to the table. No, we looked at our bank account and we were able to say this is what we together yeah. made this week. Right. And I think that is such an important piece. We never argued about money, finances, right. what's, uh, this is mine, that's yours. No, this is ours, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think that is so important. Um, go, I, I want to go back just, if, if you don't mind, just yeah, for a yeah. moment. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because we were dealing with the communication piece. Yeah. And uh, communication is a very important part of how well we communicate or how well we function in the finances. Right. Um, but it also starts with how we think. Mm -hmm. If our thinking is low, then our communication is going to be mm -hmm. low. Right. Um, so it, the, the first thing that has to happen to every individual in a marriage is that that thinking has to be dealt yes. with. You wow. have to be transformed yes. in your mind. Yes. We wow. really can't function productively together mm -hmm. and yeah. have that block blossoming marriage so um, and exciting marriage yeah. uh, full of benefits and yeah. joy yeah. if we don't have or approach the marriage yeah. from a trans Form mind. That mm -hmm. means transform comes from the Greek word metamorpho, which means uh, there's a metamorphosis that has to take yeah. place. Wow. Yeah. I have wow. to get rid of the old. Matter yeah. of fact, it actually mm -hmm. uh, uses the concept of refurbish. Refurbish mm -hmm. meaning I have to get rid of everything that's old, the old mm -hmm. torn up uh, parts of mm -hmm. my mentality. Now, yeah. I think you were talking about that at the beginning um, when we were discussing the session or the segment that uh, some, so many times people bring the baggage yeah. Yeah. into their relationship. Well, that's really mm -hmm. a attaining and destroyed yeah. and, and, and messed over traumatic mind, a yeah. mind that has went through a lot of trauma yeah. and, and it can't function properly. Right. Right. And right. until we go through the transformation period yeah. to where we're renewed by the spirit of our mind That's through right. the word of God, mm -hmm. right. then we cannot really now uh, positively and productively communicate. Because right. everything you say out of your mouth, it came from your mind. That's right. All right. So that's why if you're going to really function, and I, mm -hmm. I know I'm covering a lot in this, but I'm just go dealing ahead, with it ahead. from from a financial um, point of view. If this doesn't shift, yeah. uh, everything you say is going to affect mm -hmm. your finances. Yeah. It's going to affect how you uh, relate in roles. Yeah. Um, it's going to affect how you uh, you you represent each other in your authoritative roles because we're supposed to submit one yeah. to another, yeah. not her submitting to me and and or or she just ruling over me, but no, we work together yeah, yeah, and yeah. we submit one to another. But if our mind right. concerning how we right. view one another, how we view others, how we view God, how we view ourselves, yeah. if that does not shift and be transformed, yeah. it's going to be very hard for us to be able to work together in, in our finances. Right. So I just so wanted good. to, yeah. yeah you're going in. It's kind of, didn't you go in? <laughs> Sorry. You know, the mind though, it's so important. Yes, you know, more hey, than hey, yeah, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that, was, that was good. I know, was good. I know he's got everything popping now yeah. and all of that. But I was just thinking as you were talking, um, high frequency, low frequency relationships. Yes. Mm. To where you have one person that's on this plane and then you have this person that's kind of mm -hmm. lagging behind. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get the dysfunction. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got two different minds. And the Bible says, how can two walk together? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, agree. agree. So you have to, you know, not that you can't learn to function, but mm -hmm. that low functioning person has right. got to come up yeah. to where that high functioning person than is otherwise the relationship can't yeah. work yeah and I, and I think with some of that starts just to use like a metaphor um I remember when I started working a job you know I went in as an employee yeah I worked hard mm -hmm. and then I got elevated to, yeah. to, to a management so I can't think at this position like I used to do at this that's right. position that's right that's so right. could you explain the importance of people knowing that once you go from dating 
to engagement to marriage. The mindset has to grow with that. You can't be married and think like you did when you were dating. Come on, oh. and you need to take yourself through that. When I know you're gonna hit that real quick. Oh God. You you can't. Um, you've got to take yourself through that process of of shifts and changes. Prior, prior yes. to the marriage, yes. or you're going to find yourself in a whole lot of turmoil, mm -hmm. and that comes down to relationships with other people, mm -hmm. your single friends, kind of having a little powwow with them mm -hmm. and letting them know, you know, I'm getting ready to marry this young mm -hmm. lady, and mm -hmm. so things are going to be changing with mm -hmm. how we can hang out and you know how we can maneuver, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature. more married people into exactly your circle. Exactly, begin mm -hmm. to you know exactly yeah. begin to commune more with married people so that you obtain a marriage mindset mm -hmm. okay there's mm -hmm. a marriage mindset mm -hmm. okay so you can't come into a marriage thinking you're gonna hang out every night yeah. <laughs> you can't come into a marriage thinking okay she's, she's gonna take care of the kids all by herself right, right. so there's a mindset that has to be um, migrated toward prior and you got to put the work in, you know, yeah. like I said, that's what premarital counsel is for. Yes, that's yes. what talking to other um, good marriages um, um, do um, for us. Yeah, so yeah. Um, putting the work in, being intentional about making the shift. First of all, you got to make the decision. Are you really ready to eternally bind yourself to another soul? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You got to settle that first. Wow. Mm -hmm. That there is nothing Whew. else that your affections can be poured into mm -hmm. but that person. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. because we see it all the time where you're together for a while, five years, 10 years, maybe even 20, and then now your affections are going somewhere else. Yeah. And we have to be the type yeah. of person that makes that individual want to continue, mm -hmm. come on now, yeah, right. to pour their affections you're right. You're right. into you're right. your life. So you're right. that's one aspect of how Absolutely. to do that. Absolutely. From well, you know, it's, it's so. Um, or dating. It, from dating mm -hmm. as well, but it's it's so um, even in what you said, and I think that was perfect because of course those are the things I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's so important to recognize that even when Jesus was dealing with uh, marriage, he was he was dealing with it from the perspective. Even it's mentioned in Genesis as well, but it, he, he was talking about how man is supposed to leave his mother yes. and his father mm -hmm. and cleave to his shift. wife. Uh, that is uh, that in itself. Come on, family, mother, father, yeah. uh, probably the closest. Yeah. blood relative to a son or to a daughter right. and but God saw the importance of leaving wow. that wow. Wow. same way he told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 when he was saying listen I'm about to do something great in you mm -hmm. but I can't do what I really want to do in you until you leave That's right. we can't really function right. at optimal high level levels. and yeah. yeah in high levels high frequency yeah. in our marriage yeah. until we learn this thing called leave and cleave we have mm -hmm. to be yes. willing to let go of what was listen parents were able to bring you to a certain point yes. but then after after you get married they have done their job yes. it is now time and, and I know it's so much I want to say on that subject <laughs> but but it's the same way in friendships friendship yes. relationship yes. Um, our peer relationship yes. they help develop us socially mm -hmm. yes. they help develop uh, our world view how yes. we think about life yes. how we view our situations right. our circumstances um, how we respond how we react um, our our charisma, you yeah. know, our swag. Yeah. We get that from the relationships we had before we got married, That's whatever right. it is, you know. But <laughs> but my point in saying that is, is that they could only bring you up to a certain point. Yeah. They're somewhat mm. like what we call the scaffold. Yeah. The scaffold is designed to, uh, when the building is, is being built, you know, the people have to be on the scaffold. But, but you don't keep the scaffold yeah. up after the building has yeah. been built. Yeah. Now the building is ready for functioning. Yeah. Mm. You've been prepared for this. Yeah. You've been prepared for marriage. A yeah. lot of people don't realize they are already ready. Yes. But because they will not allow themselves, uh, calm down, you know, chill out, and stop this thing of, of being afraid of commitment, That's right. you know, to one it's, person. Commitment is beautiful. <laughs> Mm. It is beautiful. Yeah. And it, it anoints commitment. It doesn't get boring because you're yeah. committed. Yeah. You know, peace of mind. Come you got on. peace of mind. Come exactly. On. You know. So those are the things that I think we need to look into. If Jesus and if, if God had instituted, there has to be a leaving. That's right. And there has I to be a cleaving. We can it. now see that uh, those people. It's not that we excommunicate ourselves right. from them, but they had they their place. Now their role. role yeah. That's it. Their role changes in our lives. Yeah. And we have to redefine yes. that role. We have to now say, Mom, Dad, I love you. Yes. 
But now you take on a different role. You know, I'm not just the little child that ate up all your food in the house, you know. But yes. now I'm, I'm the son that you raised. I'm the, yes. I'm the man that you, you raised me to be. And now it's time for me to go ahead and make my yeah. own life. And so those are things that um, I think we need to really understand if we're going to begin to move forward in marriage. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I know in marriage, like at times, um, you really realize the other person when things happen. Yeah. And I remember uh, my wife losing her mom. Yeah. And that yeah. really brought us, you know, closer, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it was times where I felt like I wasn't doing anything because there's nothing you can do or say. Right. But I think the fact that yeah. I was there, she told me. That's mm -hmm. it. You That's know what I mean? It's everything. Mm -hmm. And you really, like, I think at, at that point you realize what marriage is for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, at, at, you know, at, at the end of the day, when everybody else is going, mm -hmm. you're going to be there. That's so, right. You know what I mean? So I'm a firm believer in, you know, treating people the way that, mm -hmm. that, that you should, even yeah. in a marriage, like showing them that That's equal right. amount yeah. of respect. Because That's no right. matter how many people come and go, this mm -hmm. person is going to be there. That's, That's right. right. You That's know, right. They're going to be right. there for you to wake up in the middle of the night, yes. be there for you in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people get it, you know, un unbalanced when sure. it comes to like influential people in their life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you said. You have a role reversal mm -hmm. yeah. when you yeah. get married. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. That's, that's so good. Um, I love that. But you have to be able to define it. Yeah. You got to see it for what it is. And I, <laughs> I, I, I like what you said when you were dealing with your wife and when her mom passed. Because trauma can either bring you close or, or it can, can separate, separate. Yeah. you. Yeah. You know, so you have to really be careful in those finer and more sensitive times of your life. Um, because it's really an opportunity. For, for, for our marriage to really, really come together, um, for you to step up yeah. and to show yeah. who you really can be yeah. for that individual. It's a time to really be selfless. There are times in marriage when it is 100% not about you, mm -hmm. and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. You know, you don't get to have your cry right now. You don't get to talk about your problems right now, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't get to say, you know, what irked your nerve right now. And how right stressed now. out you are. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. right now. I got to give you that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that, that was a really good point uh, that yeah. you brought up because we have to learn how and know how to navigate those moments in marriage. Got you. Now, how did you all get to that point where, you know, you you may come home and be ready to vent, but you realize, oh, let me sit, let me take this back seat because you look like you need more. <laughs> how, how does a person get to that point? It, it's, it's really when you get to a place um, uh, of, of of denying yourself. Mm. Jesus talks talks about um, taking up your cross, yes. taking up your own cross and following him. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 also deals with, and, and this is what I always, when it comes from the male perspective um, and position, uh, the Bible tells us husbands, love your wives yes. as Christ loved the church. Watch this, and gave himself. his life yeah. for, for the, for the yes. church. Same way with the, uh, in the marital relationship. Uh, the husband has to be willing to die. Yeah. I remember when we first, uh, outside bar here just for a moment, I remember when we first got married, um, every time she would say something, I would say, you're out of order. You know, I'm the man. You're out of order. You're out of order. And so, <laughs> that made her, that would make her cringe, you know, but, um, and, and then we discovered, of course, no, the per proverbial woman opens her mouth with, mm. with kindness. The law she of kindness. With the law of kindness. Mm. But she has to say something. So we both had some work to do on, on both parts. I had to learn that it was okay to listen. Yeah. And it was, and I had also learned it was okay for her to talk. And then she had to learn if I'm going to talk, say it in kindness yeah, <laughs> or exactly. be kind about it. But um, I think what happens in a lot of relationships, mostly when you're learning how to communicate and you're learning how to uh, to develop that that listening uh, mm. skill. Uh, it's important to be selfless, yeah. uh, to get rid of yeah. selfishness right. and to die. Are you really willing to die for this individual? Mm. You that know, awesome. and, and dying mm. goes beyond. I'll take a bullet for, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's it's one thing for me to exemplify because, of course, Jackie knows I'll fight for Jackie. I'll take up for Jackie. Um, but. The real strength is not really me taking a bullet for Jackie. Come on, the, right, Natural. right, because we always want to re, re, revert or resort rather to uh, something physical. Yeah. But but there's a greater strength. Just like I teach people all the time, uh, you can be strong with muscles, yeah. but can you control your anger? Yes. Do you know how to, the strongest mm. man is the man that knows how to control his emotions, know how to control what tongue. he thinks, his tongue. Yeah. You know, so. Even though there are times I may want to say something, I may want to retaliate, you know, if I really love her, I'm willing to die and I'm he willing so to control those things. He is you know? so good at that. Bless you. I mean, yeah. I, that is I, just I a huge benefit. He went in early. <laughs> <laughs> 
that is like a huge benefit in my life. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think it saves uh, it saves marriage or something yeah. as simple because either. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Come right. on now. And it's like you could go well, in and, 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 and argue that night, but yeah. is it worth it? <laughs> right. 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 Is it worth going to bed upset? Yeah. yeah. And this one little argument, like I said, things start with seeds sure. and it just sprouts. You know how some yeah. people are. Four years from now, you want to cruise and something mm. go bad and they bring it up. Come on. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, and now that you talked about bullets, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want you all to go into the importance of covering your marriage, not mm. giving another person a, a, a loaded gun. And what I mean is, I think in marriages and relationships, and as people, we all have guns that are mm -hmm. empty. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, hey, hey, pastor, this mm -hmm. is what I like to do mm -hmm. in my spare time, and mm -hmm. I'm loading it up. Mm -hmm. But this is what me and my wife do. I load it up. Mm -hmm. This is what we know what, what she on. does to me. Come and then on. I give you this gun, so now at any given moment, yeah. I got you. you can use it against me. Now, yeah. how important is it to use discernment of know mm -hmm. who to confide in, mm -hmm. who to talk to, and who not to? Yeah. Wow. That is so good. Yeah. Praise the That Lord. is good. Covering your marriage is of utmost importance. And yeah. one thing that we always say is everyone is not anointed to hold your information. Mm. Yes. Everyone mm. is not anointed to hold your information. Wow. So you want to know that you're in a covenant relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with individuals that you share your heart's situations with. Yeah. People who are skilled people who are educated, Mature. people who may even are uh, bound by confidentiality mm. as far as pouring your marital you're information right, into right. mm -hmm. people such as, you know, counselors, coaches, yes, your pastors, yes. you know, I wouldn't even say your BFF per se, oh, yeah. because sometimes you know, because they are your best friend, they can be biased and you don't want to change sure. their view mm -hmm. of your spouse because you're, you're right. telling too much. So wow. you don't want to... Um, set yourself up for a, a future attack, like mm -hmm. you said, loading that gun, mm, right. um, because you don't know how long that relationship will last. Yeah, you don't right. know what the enemy may try to do. And even with family, because then, then you had to cook out wondering. Come on, and, you know, because you at the table by <laughs> yourself, and it sets in. You must have been telling. You Come know. on, <laughs> but it goes back to the the leave and cleave principle yeah, that right, he mentioned right. earlier. Yeah. You know, I had to hold a lot. Yeah. I had to hold a lot and, she did. and it grew my relationship with God. Mm. It grew my prayer life because I refused to go run and tell him mom. Mm. I refused to go tell sister. I re there were times I had to get in my car and just drive to an isolated place. Yeah. Mm. And it was just tears for maybe an hour. Yep. God helped me. Sometimes I couldn't even talk. Okay. God helped me. Now, I wish I would have had you know, some help at, at that at that point. Absolutely. And there are people who probably could have been outlets. Mm -hmm. But because I was, my mindset was, I got to cover him. Mm -hmm. I got to cover him. I'm not going to put him out there like that. I know this is going to pass. As upset as I may be, hurt yeah. as I may be, I know this is going to pass. Why? Because I'm not leaving him. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not leaving him, there's no need. Mm. You know, why, would I, why would I mess up his name? Right. Why would I yeah. mess up his reputation? Um, why would I have undue warfare now brought? into my marriage because now I got Sally and Jane fighting with me yeah. against my spouse. Yeah. So um, some, let it grow your relationship. Mm -hmm. Let it grow your intimacy with God. Let it grow your prayer life. You know, there mm -hmm. are some things maybe you cannot hold. You have to go to someone, but make sure they're anointed mm -hmm. and they're confidential individuals that you know when you walk out of that room, it's left with them. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. I think for men it's different. Like when I was raised single parent mom, mm -hmm. I had my aunts around. My uncle's work, so you know, being raised around a lot of women, mm -hmm. I think I learned how to talk. And yeah, so yeah, it's I, I think for men it's hard to get us to talk, mm -hmm. but to know, okay, I so told hard. you this, yeah, and now you 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 drop the ball. Now right. I can never tell you. It'd be even wow. ten times harder to get sure. that person to mm -hmm. communicate. Yep. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, one of the things my mom told me right before I got married, <laughs> and I always talk about it, uh, tell the congregation about it, and that is, uh, she would say to me, son. It doesn't. Number one, she was. She said to me, "Son, it doesn't matter how angry she makes you. Yeah. Don't you ever talk about your wife to another woman. Mm. Good mom. Never. Mm. Good mom. And and I've never done yeah. that. Mm. Anything that Jackie has done that is uh, that has hurt I've me. Um, I've talked about it. Yeah. I just come yeah. to her and say, okay, this is what you did. Now, yeah. I wasn't. Well, I guess I still am in some ways. I'm an internalizer. Mm -hmm. So I internalize a lot. You gotta um, go fishing to get something. I know, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I had to learn how to really be able to communicate yeah. openly with her and tell mm -hmm. her, okay, 
this is uh, step by step. Yeah. This is what bothered me. Yeah. This is what you did. I'm not uh, beating you up about it. Yeah. We had to learn that too. Yeah. That's, that's a whole nother segment. <laughs> but um, we had to learn how to uh, how to really say what bothered us about the other individual. Yeah. And when she afforded me those opportunities, I was able to really get a freedom uh, from just being so much of an inter I'm still an internalizer now, yeah. but I'm not as bad as I used to be. Mm -hmm. I just go step by step and I tell her this is what I'm dealing with. But um, that's what my mother taught me. Yeah. She said, don't you ever. Don't take it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't you take it out. And never once, out of 21 years of yeah. marriage, we never had to call on our, our parents yeah. and say, you know, I'm tired of her, I'm <laughs> sick of her. And she's never done that to me as, many, as much as she could have. Uh, she never did that to me. And uh, we never went to our friends and said, you know what, uh, I need you to help me with this, you know, because Jackie did this and she said that and I'm frustrated and I'm mm -hmm. angry with her. We never had to do that you know, mm -hmm. in order to get some that level of counseling. So. I love what you're saying because as you were talking, the thought came to me. Yeah. It's unfair to your friends and family to do that. Yeah. Especially when you know what your spouse is anointed to do in your family mm -hmm. and for your friends. It's that unfair another, to yeah. them wow. to yeah. now change their vision of who that person is because you know tomorrow you're going to still be with them. They're mm -hmm. still anointed. They're still <laughs> called by God. And the word and, and the the, the knowledge and mm -hmm. the wisdom that they are called to release, mm -hmm. sure, you've not sure. blocked it. It's like you're bruising their testimony. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. So yeah. it, it works against both parts. Or even their effectiveness just Amen. to just to minister. Right. Um, because just because a person uh, hits some bumps in the road while they're on their journey does not disqualify them. Absolutely. Um, and and I think uh, in in just the Christian world in the in the world of believers. Uh, we've uh, put this this uh, perfecting measurement upon people, yeah. and we made people think that you have to be perfect in order to be effective. No, you don't have to be perfect to be effective. You have to be authentic. Right. It is being mm -hmm. authentic that brings positive or productive effectiveness. And a lot of people, because uh, you got people who are trying to be like. Uh, I'm not going to say names, but try to be like the next uh, uh, big person mm -hmm. or big name in Hollywood, whatever. But but you don't realize every time you compare, I think we dealt with comparison earlier. Every time you compare yourself with someone else, you are devaluing right. your genuineness, your authenticity. Mm -hmm. And every time you devalue it, you push it to the side. That's Therefore, right. if you push aside uh, your authenticity, you're, you're overlooking your gifts. Mm -hmm. And if you're not using your gifts, then you don't have effectiveness. That's you're right. not effective in many ministry um, or whatever your assignment is. So those things are so important when you're dealing in, in your marriage. You, you Stop comparing. Stop, yeah. stop uh, thinking that you need to be like someone else and, and, and trying to do it like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. Be who God has called you to be. And not only that, stop trying to look for this, this thing called perfection. Right. You know, but look for authenticity. Right. If we can train people right. in our churches, mm -hmm. our single people, mm -hmm. how to stop looking for marriage mm -hmm. or stop looking for relationship yeah. and, 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 and stop looking for this picture perfect man, picture perfect wife, Coca Cola yeah. bottle, yeah. Uh, abs, whatever, and start looking for authenticity. Mm -hmm. We'll have less yeah. people getting involved in relationships mm -hmm. and being hurt and being uh, disappointed yeah. because they found out that the person was not who they said wow. they were. That's right. And if I can just kind of wrap that oh, up a little bit, ahead, even more so, it's pride when you take negative information outside of your marriage because you're trying to yeah. cast a better image of yourself mm. yeah. than your spouse. That's another way yeah. to look at it. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a pride spirit that you're, hey, I'm going to tell you this and they're doing this, but are you talking about what you did that may have caused what happened or what they did or how they responded? So pride says, let me go tell somebody so that I can buddy up Mm -hmm. And so that I can feel right. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not about who's right. It's about what's right. And that's one thing in our relationship as well we've come to. We don't have rights. Right. We don't, we don't deal with, well, I have a right to say this. And I have a right to do that, you know, because <laughs> who I am and what I do. What's right? Right. And, you know, even that mindset, just to pick it back on what you just said, that mindset is a couple who's in competition. Yeah. Wow. I want to present mm -hmm. me as the better person, yeah. but I don't want to present that person exactly. as a better person. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to know I'm innocent in everything. And and mm -hmm. that's competition, yeah. you know. But but we're not called, in a marriage, you're not called to competition. Yeah. You're called to complimenting. Um, yes. mm -hmm. yes. We compliment yes. one another. Yes. Um, me looking good makes her should always make her look good. 
versa and, and vice versa. Um, it, let's eliminate the competition. Yeah. I'm not competing against her right. for uh, the uh, best, I guess, uh, I don't know, teacher of the year or yeah. or, or who listener. can who voted for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm the better, better. listener than she yeah. is or I'm the be yeah. better communicator than she is. No, yeah. we both are growing. We yeah. both are learning. And um, I'm going to put her in a good light just like she puts me in a good light. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. right. No that's, competition. That's great ways to look at it. Because yeah. when you're building yourself up, you're diminishing the other person. Come right, on, right. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, it's two ways to get the tallest building in the city. Mm. Either tear everyone else's down or yeah. you can build yours. <laughs> you know, and I just I love think that, that that's... Um, that's right. It, it's kind of crazy because when you focus on yourself, you're forgetting about that other person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And then, you know, as you get taller, you cast a shadow. That's true. Right. You know? Sure. And, um, yeah, I think if you focus on, like, that complimenting, if you compliment mm. each other yeah. and... You know, if you're at competition with that, you'll yes. always win. Versus yes. That's right. complimenting yourself. Yes. Um, wow, this has been a power, power pack segment. Power exactly. pack. Absolutely. Um, are you all willing to come back and do a part two? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, so I feel like I want to go in more. Sure. But sure. yeah, we definitely got to get a part two so that way we can kind of get that get that rolling. But hey, it's great to have you all. Thank great you. to have you all. Yes, sir. Um, what, what do you want to say to the audience that is on the brink of giving up, that thought about uh, divorce? when they woke up uh, this morning or, or when they're watching this video? Like, what do you want to say to them? Well, you know, I just want to say this first, is that number one, um, God is the God of possibilities. Yes. He's not the God of impossibility, yes, right. but he's the God of possibility. Yes. The Bible says with all things, uh, with God, all things are That's possible. Right. Right. Um, and I taught this a, a, a long time ago uh, with uh, God not being the God of impossibilities That's because right. he never looks at a situation as if it's impossible. Right. But every time he sees a situation, he says it's possible. And so what I want to say to you is that uh, God is looking at your situation and I'm telling you, even with what I've gone through, uh, we've gone through together yes, yes. and experienced, it looked like it was impossible, but that was not God's end for my life That's or right. for our life and even for our marriage. But it was possible yes. to change. So I want to relay that to you today awesome. is that it's possible to have a good marriage, yes. to have a marriage that you can reap the super benefits marriage. from, a yes. super marriage. Yes. Uh, it's, it's good for you, uh, or rather it's possible for you to really experience the joy that marriage right. affords. Right. Uh, and you can be in love. Yes. You can experience true, authentic love right. in your marriage. And that's what I want to say. It is possible. It was possible for us. It's possible for that's you. Right. And if I can throw a little something in yeah. there, anybody can change. Yeah. Remember, anyone oh. can change. Give them the opportunity to do so. That's part two. Amen. Wow. Yeah, so we're definitely coming back with part two. Um, like I said, if, if, if you notice how they operate, they work uh, as a team. And like I said, and I hope that everything they said, I pray that you all take it in, Amen. let it sink in, let yes. those positive seeds dive into the yes. garden of your mind. Yes. And yes. hopefully they'll grow and we can save some marriages and you can help yes. other people. Yes. Um, you can get yes. this to whoever needs that, all right? Mm -hmm. um, and like I always say, one love. Be blessed. We would like to thank you for listening to this episode of The Art of Reinvention by Teflon John. And we encourage you to share this episode across all your social media platforms. And we also encourage you to visit our website at www.imteflonjohn.com and follow us on all our social media platforms at facebook.com slash realteflonjohn, twitter.com slash realteflonjohn, and instagram.com slash realteflonjohn. And while you're on Facebook, go ahead and like our page so you can receive first-hand notifications every time we go live with a motivational video or any motivational content. And as I always say, one love, be blessed.